the average starting salary of an MBA graduate in the US as of 2020 was upwards of $120,000 to know that there are more than just two types of MBA programs available. So here are the things that you should have prepared before you look into applying to an MBA degree. This is where your GPA matters. They are pretty chiching and can be very expensive to attend. The MBA program in the US typically takes about two years to complete as a full-time student and I know there are part-time programs available but we'll get into that a little later. It can cost anywhere between $150,000 to $200,000 and for all my Indian fam out there that's over 1 crore rupees. Like wow that is a lot of money. But frankly speaking there's a reason why the MBA program in the US attracts so many students especially international ones. So let's get into it. So in a nutshell, the MBA degree combines business and management skills to provide graduates that are either starting a career in management or just trying to advance in one with options in literally any course. So one of the things that attracts graduates in any field of study is the salary that that degree provides once you graduate. And this is exactly what the MBA offers. It was reported about 80 to 100% increase in base or the previous salary of graduates after they completed their MBA degree in the US. And this combines all of their scientific and organization skills to put towards a specific business arena. Now, I personally think that the best part about an MBA degree is that it combines and brings together students from different backgrounds. Like you could be sitting in a classroom that has engineering, management, arts, agriculture, fashion students, and you're all learning the same concepts of business. Everyone is focused on learning those tips and tricks and how to grow their business in their respective field. And I feel like that is a great culture to be in. You don't want to start your MBA application and then realize that you're missing some of the key things in your application. So here are the things that you should have prepared before you look into applying to an MBA degree. It's important that you have at least a four years bachelor's degree. Now this can be whatever you're interested in or want to pursue business in. Uh, TOEFL scores are a requirement for international students as English proficiency scores. A good range to be in is anywhere between 90 to 110. But again, remember that this isn't a necessity. GRE GMAT scores may be required depending on your university's requirement. And the reason I say this is because after the pandemic, some universities have offered waivers and some accept either. So make sure that you check the university's website to understand what that college wants. And last but not the least, some amount of work experience is always good when you're applying for a business-based management degree. Anywhere between three to seven years is a good number to be in. So with all this in mind, like the situation that I'm in right now, I'm closing in just about three years of a working uh, professional uh, in my career. And this would be a great time for me to apply to an MBA if I wanted to. And, you know, I've given this some thought, maybe I just might in the future, but I have the right work experience. I'd have to give my TOEFL exam again, GRE or GMAT, depending on what university I want to apply to. And I have all the prerequisites in place to apply for this degree. Now, even though I have everything ready, I'm still a young professional who's working a full-time job. And if I were to, you know, start looking into applying to colleges, one of the main tasks would be shortlisting colleges. And this is where someone could really be helpful if they were to provide you with the right list, uh, depending on your scores, depending on your academic and GRE scores, GMAT scores. So that's where I'd like to introduce you guys to this week's sponsor, Yocket. They have an online grad school finder that helps shortlist universities based on your profile. Uh, you can check them out. It's going to be the link in the description below and it's very useful. So definitely go ahead and play around with it. Now, while I was doing my research, I found that the popular MBA programs in the US include Harvard, UPenn, Stanford, MIT, and Columbia. Now, while all of these almost fall in basically the Ivy category, they are pretty chiching and can be very expensive to attend. But I also found that the average starting salary of an MBA graduate in the US as of 2020 was upwards of $120,000 
per year. So I feel like the trade-off there is pretty valuable. Now, the other thing I want to mention is if you're thinking of applying to MBA, you should know that there are more than just two types of MBA programs available. It's not just part-time and full-time. There are different types of MBA degrees, and I'm going to put a screenshot of the different types offered on the screen right now. Uh, just to kind of go over them, apart from full-time and part-time, there are online options. There is an executive MBA um, for more seasoned professionals with eight years of experience or more. There's an early career MBA for kids who don't have any work experience. There are global MBA degrees and there are also certificate programs. Now here I want to talk about a valuable certificate program that I'm looking into personally. It's called the PMP certification. It's basically the pro project management certification, which is really useful and can really help you learn skills if this is something that you know you need in your working um, you know area. Uh, so if you want to kind of get a feel of the MBA degree, getting a PMP certification would be a first would be a good first step to, to kind of like see if you'd like the two year program or not. So now we jump into the application process. Now here I like to divide it into two parts. The first part is your standardized testing. And I already went into this. So I'm not going to spend too much time on here, but it's basically your uh, TOEFL or IELTS and GRE GMAT. So once you have that out of the way, the, the second part is the rest of the application process. And this is where your GPA matters. Now in the research that I was doing, I found that the students that were admitted to some of the top MBA programs in the US in the year 2020 had an average GPA of 3.6. Now this isn't to say that if you have less than 3.6, you'll be rejected, but it should give you a rough idea on, you know, where the competition lies currently. Now, apart from the GPA, other things that you need to consider are your resume, your letters of recommendation, your SOPs, your work experience, and in some cases, a cover letter may be necessary too. But the one thing I do want to like give a disclaimer for is as international students, sometimes these documents are not in English for us. So before you apply, make sure that every each one of these documents is translated to English if it isn't so already. Now here I want to talk about Yokit's premium counseling services where they help guide students through the entire application process. So if you're interested in checking them out, I would highly recommend it. They'll make the entire application process very smooth and very easy for you. This brings us to the juicy part of the video, which is scholarships for all of my Indian students out there who are watching this video. Now, the first scholarship that I want to talk about is the Stanford Reliance Thirubhai Fellowship. This co covers 80% of the tuition for Indian students pursuing an, an MBA at Stanford. The second one is the Chicago Booth University Scholarships. Uh, there are two of these. The first one, which offers a million dollars um, to an Indian student pursuing MBA at the Chicago Booth School. And the second one, which offers $25,000 per year to three Indian students pursuing MBA at the Chicago Booth Business School. So these are some pretty juicy scholarships. If you guys want to check them out, I'm going to leave a link to them in the description below as well. But for all the other students who are watching this video who aren't from India, I'm not going to leave you guys hanging. I have a couple scholarships for you guys as well. Uh, some of the interesting ones that I found were the Harvard, Harvard Business School Scholarship, which was offered last year to at least 50% of the class at Harvard. The awards offered were up to $40,000 per year to cover tuition. Then we had the McComb Scholarship and Fellowship, where the award ranges anywhere upwards of $2,000 to a complete tuition waiver. And the last one is the Ford Foundation Scholarship for nominated female applicants of Columbia's Business School MBA that has offered this scholarship. And the amount of the scholarship may vary depending on you know, different circumstances. So definitely check all of these out. So this brings us to the end of this video and let's answer the most awaited question, which is, is it worth it to pursue an MBA degree in the US? Now, I think throughout this video with everything that we've seen, it's definitely a good degree to pursue. It's worth it in the US and statistics show that grads have a good salary outcome once they complete the degree. So I think in my opinion, it's a very fruitful path which opens many doors in terms of career opportunity. And if you're going to do it anywhere, I think the United States is a great place to invest in this opportunity. Um, so that's my take on the subject. 
Also, if you're looking, if you're just looking to like start out with kind of prepping for these exams, definitely check out Yakit's app where you can get started with the GMAT prep and all of their other services. I'm going to link them in the description below. Um, so check them out. All right, guys. So that brings us to the end of the video. If you like this video and you're watching up till this point, definitely smash that thumbs up button. It really helps the channel a lot. I appreciate all of you guys subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. If you guys have any questions about any of the things that I went over in this video, or if you just generally have any other questions about pursuing the MBA degree, feel free to drop them in the comments below. I'll try to answer all of your questions. But until then, stay safe and I'll see you guys in the next video, probably next week. Take care. Bye.